Now it's time to model some thickenings. And what I'm re referencing when I say thickenings, I'm talking about blobs of concrete that get poured between footings and the actual slab, these actual floors. So there's two conditions where thickenings just naturally occur, but there's two different workflows as to when you would model them. As a rule of thumb, wherever you have a wall foundation, like these footings underneath these walls, thickenings would be the last element that you model there, okay? But where you don't have a structural wall, especially concrete, thickenings would be the next modeled element before you model in your footing, okay? So let's just go in order of importance. At this point, we've been using the dimension of one foot to locate all of our foundations. Uh, and I mean one foot with our columns being offset a foot below and our walls over here being offset a foot below from the lowest slab. So we're just going to use that same one foot as our guiding dimension here. So if you've downloaded those uh, that zip file of families in the portal, let's go ahead and load in the uh, th uh, slab edge thickening. So let's go to our insert tab find load family and under your foundation families that you've downloaded let's go ahead and download thickened slab edge and hit your control key thickened slab and let's hit open and if you get this option if you already had those families loaded in let's go ahead and overwrite okay now let's clean up our view a little bit here we know that we are going to be dealing with floors and footings so right now we don't necessarily need our walls and our columns visible so let's go ahead and turn those off so I'll turn off my walls and my columns and I will assign a transparency to floors so let's find the floors row find the transparency column and we'll hit override and let's just assign a 50 percent transparency all right so we are now cleaning up our view so we can uh, better understand what we're looking at okay so for a perimeter footing where we do not have a wall all companies have their own version of this detail but this is where we're gonna model a thickening first so in your project browser let's uh, navigate down to your families find your structural framing category and open that and under thicken slab edge we should have two types one for a slab on grade one for a matte slab which a di which is a different kind of foundation system okay us as the Revit users we will know which family type to use because the engineers have already told us what kind of foundation system they want to use so let's drag and drop slab on grade remember our cursor changes we are active in our framing tool so now let's hit this pick lines tool let's hit the 3d snapping option and now before I click an edge let's go to the properties palette and let's play with these dimensions here we have a width this is a this is a thickening a width and a depth the depth represents the top of footing dimension because this 3d snapping checkbox and this pick lines option will allow us to pick one of these edges but the way that I built this thick and slab edge family I want the math to be easy when it does come when it does come time to for us to use math we're using one foot and one foot applies to top of slab so let's go to this depth dimension and type in one foot we'll leave the two foot as it is and now if you have your pick lines and your 3D snapping available or checked, let's click the top edge corner of this slab. Okay, so now you can see what Revit did. Now you understand the hierarchy that Revit places on categories. We have a floor category, a foundation category modeled here, and we have a framing category, which is the element that we just placed. And if I hit escape twice, and I select this thickening, you can see where Revit 
has the thickening existing. It exists at the top of the slab because that is the edge that we selected. But if I isolate this element, IE, you can see what Revit sliced away from the element because it's a structural framing category. And Revit considers structural framing slightly lower on the hierarchy when compared to floors. Floors will automatically slice it off. So this is filler, okay? This is geometry that exists in real life but gets poured as liquid. So if I restore my view, this element will be poured with the slab when they go and pour all of this over the footings. We have yet to model a footing here, okay? So let's go ahead and just place another one around this corner. Let's select this existing thickening and let's right click on it and hit create similar. Remember, it remembers that our 3D snapping was selected. Let's hit pick lines over here on our draw panel and let's click this top edge. All right, so there's one. Now let's place a footing under this. Let's go to my project browser. I got my structural framing. Continuous footing this time. We've already used wall foundations on the couple of the previous videos. Now let's use grade beam. Let's drag and drop grade beam. Now let's hit pick lines again. But this time, let's pick the bottom edge of the thickening we just placed. All right, so now let's cut a section through there and understand what we're looking at a little bit better. In your project browser, let's scroll all the way up. Double click on level one. We've been working over here in this general area, so let's cut a section here. View tab and hit section. And my first click is gonna be on the left and my right click on the right. Let's pull this view a little bit uh, back a little bit and let's double click on the window to take a look. All right, now let's change this detail level here so we can see everything a little bit better. We can change the scale if you'd like. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, let's go to half inch. That half inch is better. So you can see what Revit did right there, where it placed the element, where the endpoints are based on our selection. So the beauty of this type of modeling is we are using modeled edges that we've already modeled to locate new modeled elements. Okay, we use the thickening to decide where the top of footing was gonna be, one foot depth. And then we use the bottom edge of the thickening, the bottom left-hand corner of that thickening, we used to select and place our beam. So you see the importance of, our, of, of having a workflow set, all right? So now, let's go back to our 3D view Type in 3D if you're using those keyboard shortcuts. And let's just say that we need this footing to be aligned, right, with the edge of that slab. If I go back to section two, let's just say that we need that footing to be aligned right there, okay? There's a couple of ways you can go about it. And I'm gonna close my section and my level because I want you to get more and more fluent, more comfortable with doing these changes in 3D. So two ways. You can use your Align tool, AL, and simply hover over this face of this slab, and you can see that the top surface is highlighted right now. Go ahead and hit Tab until the vertical surface highlights, and then click. Now you can just select that face and it moves, okay, so that's one way. Now let me do a quick undo. Another way to do it is if you select your, your footing and in the properties of the footing, under the geometric position, you have this cool little option called Y justification. And on that option, if you click right, you can see that it pushed it in. It kept the location line where we originally selected it you can see the endpoints. There's an invisible location line there. You kept that location line there. We just told uh, Revit to change the justification. You want the location line to be on the right of that thing. 
Sometimes the right won't work and you have to hit left, just based on how your modeling sequence was. But it's good to know that that exists. Another important topic, another important thing that we should all be aware of. Since we're using the framing category to place these, these beams, right? Revit doesn't like beams on top of beams. What do I mean by that? If I were to delete this beam, which is a foundation element, but we're speaking in Revit terms, I delete this beam, right? And let me go ahead and place that same beam. I'm going to type in BM, that stands for structural beam. And I got my 3D snapping checkbox on, and I'm going to hit pick lines. But this time, I'm going to choose that same top edge of the floor. Okay, Revit did that. And now I'm going to select this beam, and in the properties, I'm telling myself, I'm reasoning, it doesn't matter where I place it, I can use the geometric position to figure out where to, where to put it. So this is where you can say, okay, the Z offset, let me go with minus one foot, because that's where top of footing is, you see it moving down. Um, the Y justification, let me say left, okay, it's not left, let me say right, okay, it's right, okay, we're good. Is this wrong? No. But did you see how many steps I took? Did you see how many extra um, mental workflow I had to go through? And then on top of that, I typed in the same one foot dimension, right? The one foot dimension for my thickening and the one foot dimension for my Z offset for my beam. And then on top of that, Revit sees two beams on top of each other. Because if I just selected this footing, and you see where Revit sees the location line? At the top edge of the floor. And if I select my thickening, Revit sees that location line being in the same place. That is, you might run into confusion later. When you start adding more beams around the perimeter of this building, and all of these beams have the same location line, you can confuse Revit. Then your beams might start cutting back and it might be, it might behave in a way that you didn't expect. So I motivate you and I encourage you to use certain elements to locate the next element. We've already located these thickenings. Let's use the bottom edge of that thickening to locate our footing. So let's just go through that, um, uh, that workflow one more time. Continuous footing, we're doing an 18 by 18, pick edge, and I'll pick this one and that one. Now I can pick all of them once we've placed our thickenings just on the perimeter where we do not have a wall foundation, right? We're not tackling those. And now I can select all of those beams after you've placed them, and then you can change their Y justification to right whatever it needs to be, or you can use your align tool and align them in, okay? So it's good to know the different workflows. Now, if we go back to our project browser and go up to level one, we have a section cut through here. So if I zoom in here and double click on this blue head, I got this section cut. We let this width, if I go to the properties of this thickening, we let the width be two feet. Well, now let's make it match what our footing is. This is a thickening. It is a filler, okay? So let's go ahead and say 18 inches. That's what our footing is supposed to be. And now we are starting to understand how this is actually going to be built. We can see how there is no hard line between the thickening and the slab, yet there is a hard line between our footing and our thickening. That's where materials are taking over. That's where if we select this thickening and we hit edit type, you can see that it is a slab on grade material and that is matches the material of our floor behind. Now if I escape and select this grade beam and I go to my edit type properties, you can see that the structural material is concrete foundations. So they're all concrete 
when we slice through these things, they all look the same. So we know that later down the line, our drawings will look nice when it comes time to print. But we are creating a nice hard line because Revit sees two different materials. And now we can see that, okay, this thickening is really going to be poured with that floor. Let's go back to 3D. Let's talk about construction now. We have no columns here yet, right? Or walls. These footings and this, these grade beams right there, they will be poured on day one. Then, at some point in the future, this slab with those footings that we modeled, I mean, with those thickenings, sorry, that we modeled, they will be poured afterwards. And that's where you start understanding the sequencing of things.